Hey everyone, Devin Martin here, and today's topic is about self-projected authority in human design. So this is a special topic for me because I have self-projected authority, and I have been experimenting with this quite radically since 2014. And I've been wanting to make a video about this for a long time, and as things go, my perspective and my wisdom and my insights about this authority always evolve over time. So I remember in 2015 when I was training as a certified guide in human design when I presented on this topic as a part of my practice, the way that I looked at it at that time was quite different than the way that I look at it now. And I'm sure that over time I'll have more insights about this. But it's coming up for me. I feel like it's surging up to be shared. And that's a big topic for self-projectors because we are here to share our sense of self. And we have a voice, identity, and authority that speaks. So here is my 2019 reflection on what it's like to be a self-projected projector and have the G-Center as an inner authority. So the topics for this video is to one, educate you briefly on the mechanics of the self-projected authority in human design terms. I also want to share my story with you um, as a self projector and I also want to challenge some things that have been said about this authority that I have found are not completely true and I also want to offer you practical tips and different practices if you are a self projector that you can take into your life so that you can start kind of exercising this authority and building your relationship with yourself. So. What was really fascinating in my own journey of my own life is that I have been so deep into my study and experimentation and guiding others with human design that I recently was kind of drawn to pick up old journals. I've been keeping journals my whole life and I felt really drawn to pick up journals from when, who was I, who was Devin? before I learned that this was my authority because I wanted to see, you know, knowing this information can have a big impact on our life. And sometimes what I've noticed with human design is that we take in certain topics or terms and then it can actually limit us or we think we have to be a certain way or do something in a certain way to be aligned with who we are. And I think that there's a beautiful piece about that radical experimentation. And I honestly feel like sometimes whatever path you're in, Sometimes you have to go down the radical path to really experiment with what the different things are, whether that's a yoga practice or it's prayer or it's you know any type of system, we really want to experiment with it, see the valid validity of it, see how real it is. So I went back to before all this started and I read some of my journals and things that I said about myself and I found some really fascinating insights in there and that's why I feel ready to share this video with you now. And one of the fascinating things I found about reading my old journals was that one, I was keynoting my chart. So now I know all the terms and the keynotes and the language and the lingo of human design and the gene keys. And I spent many years doing that. And it's interesting because when I looked back at my old journals, I was actually keynoting, you know, actually saying actual words about my chart and I didn't know it at the time. So my theory with these systems is that we already know who we are we is already in us we're already living it it doesn't mean we're living it at, at full capacity or we're particularly healthy in that process but my take on these systems is that we know who we are and um but human design gene keys other different systems whether whatever personality system it is it essentially just gives us permission or validation or language to then understand it at a deeper level. So I have found so much joy in really practicing these different systems to really understand these human mechanics and then witness it and watch it play out in life. So today's topic is about self-projected authority and it's probably going to be a longer video because the nature of self-projectors is to talk. <laughs> Self-projected authority is a talking authority, <laughs> you know? So the keynotes about this authority in human design is, listen to what you say, soundboard, talk things out, listen to your sense of self. And it's so simple in a sense, but I also feel like this authority is quite complex. And the reason it's complex are for a few different reasons. One, 
self-projected authority it makes up only about two percent of projectors there's lots of different types of projectors we're a complex bunch of people and so it's not a common authority so there's not that many experts or people talking about what it's like to live with it so i want to be that resource for you through this video if you are a self-projector or if you love a self-projector or you know you just want to learn about these different dynamics so in human design the basic mechanic of being having self-projected authority means that that person is the projector type here to guide here to see others very deeply here to master systems here to be recognized for their gifts and their awareness in life and invited into things um, <clears throat> we could talk about all that in another video but the mechanics of self projected authority means that the G center, G center is connected to the throat through a strength or a life force. And everything under the G center is open. So if you have self projected authority, you either just have a definition, meaning your energy, your frequency, your strengths, your life force, what you're here to do and express and live out in this life, is from your sense of self. The seed of your higher self, your identity, who you are, um, your sense of love, and also where you're going, what direction you're going in, all connected to the throat. And the throat is all about expression and our voice and our frequency and our manifestation in the world. Now, if you're a self-projected authority, then you can have mental definition, but basically everything under the G center is open. So there's this dichotomy between this type, which I've noticed in myself and I've also noticed in other self-projectors. And although this type is uh, rare, statistically speaking, I don't know if I have some kind of magnet, but I attract a lot of self-projectors. Every course I've taught has had a self-projector in it. I've been in a serious relationship with another self-projector, and you guys tend to find me. So I get lots of messages from self-projectors. And the, the thing about this authority is that one, it's misunderstood, I believe, uh, because not that many people live it. Not that many people are talking about it from a place of, you know really living this out and also there's this total different way of living out this authority so one self-projected authority self-projected projectors are can be very vulnerable because think about this design everything under the G Center is open so we are constantly picking up things from our environment like oh my god some of the most sensitive people ever we're constantly absorbing, amplify, we're taking in emotions, we're taking in fears, we're taking in energy, we're taking in ego, we're taking in everything. And so this can be kind of a double-edged sword because one, we are beings that are truly here to see, you know, truly here to see others, truly here to see our environment, truly here to be wise about how all this openness works because that's how openness works, right? It can be a horror movie, but we're here to be really wise because we dance in our openness. So self-projectors can feel quite vulnerable, especially if they're in the wrong environment or their wrong relationships um, and so on and so on. And the flip side of that is this is a leadership authority. So all the channels that come from the G center of the throat have a leadership capacity to speak, to guide, and the sense of self can be quite fierce so and strong, really strong when you're tapped into it. So what I've noticed in myself and also other people that I've witnessed and been in relationship with who have this authority is that we can either feel like the most vulnerable people on the planet and the strongest, the strongest people I've ever met, some of the best leaders I've ever met, some of the most, the best guides I've ever met in my life. I mean, other self projectors I know have given me some of the most profound guidance that I have ever received in my life. So it's this funny authority, right? Being so vulnerable and so strong at the same time. And I go through that dance in my own life. So a thing to know mechanically is that these people who have this authority are quite vulnerable in the sense where we're sensitive to our environment. Now, when we're aware of our openness, we can be smart about it and we can see who we are and what we're taking in or what we're seeing or what we're absorbing or what we're dancing in. And then that is really the beauty of human design when we learn about our mechanics because we start to see. We start to see the energy at play. We don't take it personally anymore. We can come back to our power. So the kind of keynotes about this authority is it's about listen to what you say. It's a sense of identity that speaks, right? 
And that's very true. And at the same time, it can be quite challenging for self projectors because if we need to talk out how we feel or what our sense of self is saying, and we need to soundboard with other people, that's also a vulnerable authority because that's saying that we are dependent on other people to figure out what we want. Now think about how confusing that is for self projectors, okay? I feel a certain way, I wanna talk it out with somebody, especially like family, for example, because family is always wanting to help. And you know, it's hard to necessarily find like unbiased soundboards to just talk things out because sometimes when people give advice to self projectors, it can be really confusing because self projectors are, it's all about self leadership. It's about, this is me, this is where I'm going, this is what I'm saying, and this is what I'm doing, right? And then in human design, they say, no, you have to wait to be invited before guiding. Okay, totally get that, of course. If you're a self projector and you're offering guidance and advice and somebody's not open to it, it can create a ton of interference and it's not really gonna go that smoothly, of course. But one of the things that Ross said about this authority, which I'm gonna challenge directly, is that he said, there's nothing for you to say until you're invited. Until you're invited, there's nothing to say and there's nothing to decide. Now, I'm gonna say that that's not true at all for self projectors because we need to talk. We have an energy and a life force that's surging through us, making us who we are that needs to be expressed. Now, think about a projector whose only life force is to speak who they are, to speak using their powerful voice, being told that you can't speak until you're invited, I say F that. Um, it's not true. I mean, yeah, of course, there might be situations where you're in a group of people and it's not appropriate to talk and you're just kind of hanging out and like feeling out, am I invited? Maybe you're not, maybe you could stay quiet, whatever. But that's not the daily trip of decision-making for self-projectors because this is a fascinating authority and at the same time, as a self-projector, you are not here to be dependent on other people for your decisions. And because of our openness, that's what happens a lot because we get swirled around in the energy of others or the environment or our conditioning and we can lose sense of who we are and what our sense of self is saying. So this can manifest in a lot of different ways. So <clears throat> what I've noticed for myself is that I need an outlet to speak or to kind of archive what my authority is saying. It's like that inner voice, that inner, inner intuition, the higher self. When it needs to speak, I need to hold space for that. So one of the things that I do is I write. I've been writing my whole life. That's you know quite unique to my design in a sense, but I'd recommend that for, for other self projectors, a way to write. Because when I write, nobody influences that. It's a full free range. I can say whatever I want. And when I go back, usually what I find over years of archiving is that I'm saying my truth the whole time. The hard part is just listening. Another thing that I started to do, which I highly recommend for self projectors, is to create like a video blog or, you know, audio or something like that where you just have free range to get out anything that you need to say to identify your voice versus what is not your voice or what's true for you or what's not true for you. So that can come up in a lot of different ways. You can put on the audio on your phone and you can just talk something out to get it out. You can put up a you know, photo booth uh, video on your computer and talk it out. Whatever you need to do so that you have a sacred space to capture your voice, your authority that's trying to say something so it's not interfered with with other people. And at the same time, it's really important as both a projector and a self projector to have the correct or the healthy allies in life, people that see you, people that support you, people that are there for you, people that will just listen, people that will just hold space for you to chat something else so you can figure it out yourself. Now, the nature of the G Center is quite a mysterious thing. It's one of the most complex centers in the body graph when, when you learn about human design. And not only is it our sense of self and the way that we express love and the way that we have our own identity, but it's also our magnetic monopole. Now the magnetic monopole is essentially this inner GPS system that is constantly like attracting us to places and things and it's pulling us along our geometry. So if you're a self projector, your direction is like everything for you. And if you get knocked off course, it can be totally destabilizing. We can even give up on ourself. We can deny ourselves. We can feel totally beaten down and unempowered or that we don't have any energy. And it's, a, it's really about our inner GPS is always guiding us along the way. It's just a question of if we're listening to it or not. 
And this is a constant exploration and journey if you're a self projector because your sense of who you are, where you're going, and where your body is pulling you is everything. Is everything. And sometimes that means going in a direction that is not necessarily supported by people that in your life people might misunderstand you. And it can be really a hard trip for, for self projectors because. Um, it's a big thing for us and one of the ways to experiment with, with this inner GPS is to simply like uh, get in your car and start driving see where you're pulled to it could be walking around in a town see where you're pulled to synchronistically go into certain stores or you know kind of wander around and like figure out your inner GPS like where are you being pulled where are you being lit up where is this activating because I think one of the biggest traps for self projectors is that we have this magnitude of love and this magnitude of this heart, this spiritual heart. And when we get kind of wounded or beat up by life, it can kind of shut down. And the things to understand about this G center is that it may not be an awareness center, right? It's not our emotions, it's not our survival instincts, it's not our mental certainty, but it's this expansive kind of radiant energy. And what I've noticed with this is for me is I get very physical sensations about it. Like um, if I'm talking to somebody that um, I feel really drawn to, it's like I feel my heart open. I feel this like uh, magnitude in my chest and it starts to open. Maybe I get chills. Maybe I just know it's the right thing. So there's this really this activation here and it can be really difficult sometimes to listen to the G-Center because in this design, we're so open. We're so influenced by everything. The, you know, we have our the fear of our survival instincts yelling at us. Oh my God, how am I going to survive? Ah, you know, I'm so uncomfortable. You know, ah, like all that stuff. Then you got the mind that's twice as loud as that, and that's freaking out, trying to figure out everything and be mentally certain about everything. Then you got the emotions that are twice as loud as the mind, and then the emotions are freaking out, going on this roller coaster, absorbing and amplifying the emotions of everybody around them. So think about how easy it is for self projectors to get totally pulled away from this strong inner voice that's trying to speak, but it's kind of under the conditioning. So for self projectors, it's really kind of that dragon that's like coming out, right? The dragon that is strong, really strong and sometimes fierce. That's like hidden <laughs> under all the noise and all of the input from the environment. Now once you're tapped into this though and you're centered in, in this sense of self, it's strong. It's gonna say what it needs to say. It's not gonna be afraid of that stuff and it's gonna go where it needs to go. So if you're a self projector, it's about reclaiming that, reclaiming your sense of self and recognizing your voice. So <clears throat> what I noticed is that it is also a voice frequency, if you will. So in a lot of my archiving, for example, with my writing and my videos, I can actually pinpoint my frequency kind of over time. So when I am really, when my voice is speaking, like I can sense it, there's a strength to it, there's a Devon, right? There's like that identity that's there, that's true. And then if I'm like kind of freaked out or I'm super in my head or I'm not really in my own sense of personal power, it's a different voice frequency. Like I just sound different. And as a self projector, it's kind of your responsibility to recognize your voice. And that might take time. So it's not something you have to get, you know, this isn't an easy authority. And also when you have people in your life, they'll start to recognize that. What I've noticed is that, you know, my allies and my family and my friends, and if I talk about things a lot, a lot of times, even if I'm unconscious about it, they'll reflect back to me. Well, you keep saying that, so maybe you should do it. Or, wow, that really sounded like the truth or, you know, that kind of thing. So I know that I'm kind of getting a lot of this out, but that's the nature of being a self projector. It's about talking and it's about discovering who you are when you talk. So if I try to edit this video and I try to like systematically go this and this and this and this and this, I'm kind of bypassing the true power and nature of what it means to be a self projector. And that means to unleash your voice. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to share that with the world, but you need to have a space where you can unleash your voice to yourself. 
and get really comfortable with your own power in that because that's really something you're here to offer the world is a strong voice and an identity in that voice, a sense of self that speaks, a sense of self that moves, a sense of self that dances, right? And yeah, so there's a lot of things I could say about this authority. And for those of you that don't like watching long videos, I'm sorry, but that's the nature of this authority. So I'm just going to keep talking because I feel like I have a responsibility to share what this is like to live with this authority for the rest of the population that has it because it's a difficult one. And this is also a vulnerable authority because we are very vulnerable to criticism. Like our sense of self, if that's criticized, it can be really kind of damaging for self projectors. It can be like we get freaked out because it's, it's like our sense of self and who we are is so precious and, and so, you know, it, it, we can want to hide it because we don't want to get hurt. You know, we don't want to open up our heart because it's scary out there. The world is harsh. And so it can be difficult. It can be difficult for us. And so, I've taken a lot of time experimenting with this because before I found human design, I kind of had this like awakening in 2012. An awakening meaning I was at a corporate job and then I was going through a really hard time and hard breakup. I stumbled into a meditation class, started doing yoga more regularly. Uh, I got certified in Reiki and all of a sudden this whole path started opening up to me. And what I noticed was that I was so in my head trying to figure out and survive in, in my work world and I did quite well I was quite successful with my job but I was really disconnected um, to that inner call so so I basically started giving myself space to see what my soul was saying see what this inner direction was about and then what that did was it led me across the world and I traveled for many years and that's how I found human design and then I went deep into the kind of recovery of figuring all that out and really trying to listen, really trying to figure out like uh, what this authority means and like how to take care of myself and really how to listen to myself and really how to understand how all of this stuff works eventually to help people, right? When I found human design, I basically said, my sense of self said very strongly, this information can help the world and I'm going to be the one to share it. Right, that's like a self call, right? Self for calling myself out. I'm a two five. I'm gonna do this, right? And what can be limiting for projectors is that we go, oh my god, I have to wait to be invited. I don't have any energy, so I can't do anything. And I'm gonna say that's not true. And I've learned that the hard way. So don't believe that if that's what you're thinking about projectors and human design. Um, but that's for another video. <clears throat> so anyway, as I ramble, I he hope you can hear the passion in my voice because that is kind of the nature of being a self projector is there's this kind of sometimes fire, you know, and, and obviously we're all complex. I know lots of different self projectors and we're all very unique. I mean, you could think that a lot of self projectors are alike, but they're not. We're very different people and we all have very unique identities. So, you know, a lot of the self projectors I know, we have a very similar experience in the way that we experience our openness, for example. Um, and at the same time, we all have our own unique way of listening to our inner authority. And one of the big challenges though about this authority is to say, talk it out with other people. And what I found, like the real truth about it, is that sometimes we need to be totally alone to listen to our authority. Because once we're in that silence, once we're not being pulled away or, or influenced by somebody else, we have the, vo it comes up. Like it comes up and we hear it and it's clear. Or we're in a bad situation and the soul is like a soul scream. Like I've had, I've had that myself where it's like, Rah! and like I get yelled at from inside, like to get me out of a situation or to go in a certain direction. And I've heard that feedback from other self projectors about that. Like all of a sudden the G just like jumps out of your chest and you know you need to go in a certain direction or leave something. So this authority is both subtle and it's also strong because it will jump out of your chest when it needs to if you're not listening, if your mind is just like trying to totally take over. And at the same time, it's subtle. So one of the things I've learned by myself when I'm alone is that there's this kind of subtle response constantly to the stimuli that I'm in. So it's, it's different than a sacral response. You know, a sacral response is much more kind of like grounded and guttural, if you will. It's like deep into the belly. 
Whereas I respond up here. <laughs> it's like my response is like here. And it's like, oh, it's like my neck and my head and my chest. It's like I'm constantly responding with my self-expression. My self-expression is constantly responding. So if you are a self-projector, look at that. How is your sense of self in this area of your body energetically responding to what's going on? Or even sometimes what you think. So I'll hear myself say, mm-mm. Or uh uh, but it's not in my belly. It's like here. It's like uh, like uh, like I have these responses, but it's just about taking the cap off or the rope off around my neck and allowing myself to have these subtle responses without worrying about what other people think. And that's what's hard because we're so sensitive to other people that we can constantly micromanage our self-expression out of fear of pissing people off you know, blah, 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 blah. There's like endless reasons why we would hold back our sense of self-expression. So what I would recommend when you are alone in the safety of your own aura and the safety of your own space, it's your time to get really comfortable with how you're subtly responding to everything and to not hold back with what you need to say or how your body is actually reacting or responding to something. So for example, I'll be walking around my kitchen doing something or I'll see food or all of a sudden it will rise up in me, I don't want that. Or, ooh, that's nice. Or I'll feel a joy, like a happiness that comes up and I know that that's the direction that I need to go in. Or I'll just think of something I need to do, like my mind will have an idea, but my body's like, it doesn't really respond to that thought. It's like, that's not where I'm going right now or that's not what I need. And then other times it will light up and I know that that's something that I need to do. And sometimes the biggest thing about this authority I've noticed is the biggest challenge with the internal process is that a lot of times what the G center is saying, what the higher self is saying is not in alignment with the, what the mind thinks or what the not self thinks or what conditioning thinks or whatever, or what other people think, right? So there's this kind of inner rising of self projected authority. It's like the G needs to kind of rise back into its power of the decision making in the life. And, and all the other stuff needs to slowly fall away. And so this is authority is not something you hear to like get right away, but something to experiment with. And all of a sudden it gets stronger and stronger and stronger over the times that you allow it to be this sense of decision making in your life. Cause then it just gets stronger. So <clears throat> it's something that's emerging through the conditioning. So think about a self projector with just this definition, this power, this life force that wants to move and to be shared and surged and used in creative outlets and blah, 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 blah. Then think about seven centers that are open or five. So if you're a self projector, you either have five under the G center open or seven, like me, I have seven open centers. Um, it's like all of that's taking our attention because that's the way that it works. We're constantly focused in on how, what we're not. It's what's fascinating to us. You know, it's, it's, it's what we're here to learn, right? As self projectors, you're a self directed person that goes to school in your openness, that goes to journey and learn about all that so that you're wise about it. Now, if you know that that's happening, it's not so intense, it's not as intense because you know it's happening, but if you don't know that's happening, it can feel like a total roller coaster depending on where you are. And all of that stuff, all of those decisions that are being screamed at through our openness need time to kind of detox and be let go of so that we can actually hear what's going on inside under that. So something I've done is like I'll dance stuff out. Like I literally will try to shake stuff out or I try to spend time alone so I can kind of unplug from energy I'm taking in so that it's not as confusing. So if you're a self projector and you've been told that you have nothing to say until you're invited, blah, 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 that's really confusing because what happens when we're invited or somebody asks us something? We think about it and we try to think about what we say. It's not the case. It's about what we spontane what spontaneously emerges as our self-expression. So this is about a subtle dance of being tapped into this inner GPS. And a lot of times, in my opinion, that takes some time alone to figure that out. And I don't mean like going into a hermit hole and not seeing anybody for a long time, but that means having some sacred time by yourself. And if you have a very active life or you have a family life, amazing, right? But try to give yourself a little bit of time to go into this, whether that's through meditation, whether that's through writing, whether that's through exercising your voice, through singing, whether that's talking things out to yourself. 
it's like just trusting that voice that is emerging through you and trusting it. And for me, this has taken years, like literally this has taken years to get it. And one of the things I learned was that I felt very, I went through a point where I was actually feeling kind of limited by my waiting to be recognized and invited. Now I've been teaching this stuff for a long time and yes, there is a full sacredness to the invitation and being recognized as a projector and there's lots of other videos I've made about that. And in this video, I'm gonna challenge that a little bit because what I've noticed is that the mind or, you know, we take it so literally that I can actually limit us and that's not what the essence of this teaching is about. So I think it's important to challenge it because if you're a projector and you feel stopped at living your life, you feel like you can't talk until you're invited or you hold back in fear that you can't do something because you haven't been invited yet, come on. No, that's not what it's about. Go do your thing. If you're a self projector, it's about doing your thing, following what you love, going in that direction you feel pulled in. You know, it's like, it's a powerful authority. Do it, right? The invites will come. When you're on fire with your higher self in your own direction, people will invite you because you're sending off a signal that you are here to be recognized for whatever strength that is that you're wired with and that people are gonna wanna join forces with you because of that. So, for, you know, for me it's a little bit different because I had radically really stopped initiating things and I really think I had to go through that experience, you know, to really get it, like, on a lot of different levels and then also be able to challenge it. So I'm not saying that the strategy, you know, for projectors is bad, but I also want to say that be careful that you don't take it so literally that it stops you from living your life because that's not what this is about. Whenever something feels limited or not right for you when it comes to human design, I'd say drop it and just come back to being yourself in whatever way that means and don't let something limit you. And if you're a projector, don't let anybody tell you that you don't have energy because you do have energy. It's just about, we, it's just different. <laughs> and that was one of the biggest things another self projector said to me actually. Uh, my dear friend Mark, he said, I was really just, I was beaten up by a lot of stuff. We had traveled through a lot of different countries. We're both prodigals. We both have this channel of the prodigal in our design. So we want to go and explore and, and you know, um, go on these adventures and see the world. And I was just really beaten down after a lot of things. And I kept in my head like, oh, human design explained why I don't have any energy. And then I felt like dependent, like I wouldn't have any energy unless I was invited. And that's not true. And he said to me, don't let anybody tell you you don't have any energy. And it was like one of the most profound things another self projector said to me because it wasn't like a normal conversation. It was a very like intimate experience where I was like, whoa. And then through that recently, I've been really reflecting on my past. You know, I have the channel of the prodigal, the 1333, and it's really about making sense of the past. It's about, you know, going through an experience and then reflecting on it and then you know, gaining that wisdom through that reflection, through retreating after an experience to make sense of what it was. And that's basically what I've been doing with human design. I go through the experience, I reflect on it, I pull from it, and then I wanna share with you guys because it's no, no value unless it's shared. So um, I'm using my strength, my life force to then share with you guys, you know? Um, I wasn't invited to make this video, okay? But I have been recognized often for sharing people write to me all the time thanking me that's my that's my recognition invitation and the g center invites us through it lights up and it wants to pour out so we're also invited and moved by life so basically the moral of the story is don't let this stuff limit you you know <clears throat> now i went back and i reflected on who was devon before i learned this stuff because i'm feeling a bit limited like i'm holding back my life force and who was I before then? <clears throat> and basically what I realized was that I <laughs> was very tapped into my direction. Um, but it was different then because then I was like kind of fierce about it. Like I'd say, I want this. And I'd make a list of it and I'd say, I want this, I want this, I want this. And then I would start moving in that direction and then life opened. And it was like, I would get invites. I would get recruited to different jobs. I, people would show up because I was just kind of dancing around doing my thing, going in my direction saying, I want this. 
because I kind of just had that veracity at that time. Like I just kind of had that like energy. Like I had that energy and that zest for life and I was, I was young and I was on fire and anything was possible and I could do anything. And then when I found human design, it was like, oh, now I have to be waited to recognize the vibe before doing anything. Now, how sad is that, that you get the guides and the leaders in this world, the projectors, and in this video, self-projectors, feeling defeated and pulled back to not live their life because of certain strategies. So I wanna say tread lightly with this stuff and use your own voice to figure out what's right for you. And so it was interesting because then I kind of went into this surrender with human design going like, well, I don't know who I am until I'm invited or I don't know until I say stuff. And it was all very important for me and I'm not kind of bashing this stuff with human design because I love it, it's what I do, right? I love human design. I'll probably love it for the rest of my life. Um, but I also want to be really practical and real with you guys because if I'm not real about these insights that I picked up through my experiment, then I'm not helping anyone, you know? So, uh, what I realized was like, I would just say I wanted to do something, like I would just, it would come out and I would go in that direction. And then like, What's really kind of hard though for self projectors is that the G center, like when it pivots, like when it moves direction and it's trying to move, if we get a lot of shit from other people or people misunderstand us and we don't stay in that power, we can give up on our direction. We can just like totally feel like we give up on ourselves. And that's kind of really sad. And I've done that. And, um, but when we're really strong in that direction, there's nothing to really stop us because we're self directed people. We're self leaders and it's about tapping into that sense of self and going in that direction and it, sometimes it can be confusing to clarify what that direction is but it's really just about having patience with yourself because when that g-center lights up there's energy so it's just like this video you know it, when it lit up that i needed to share this and it kept coming up for days i was like okay just gotta share it so sharing it but back then, before I learned about these strategies, I also had other obstacles, like I was tired, you know, blah, blah, blah. I didn't really understand a lot of the mechanics. I'm so happy I do now. But now I'm at a point now where I'm trying to integrate, you know, that piece before, that wisdom and the way that I was before, and what I've gained along this journey of really going down this path, you know, this total experiment about what this human experience means and, and using these systems to make sense out of it. So if you're a self projector, I would say go for, do, pour your energy, express, move in the direction that makes you feel alive, makes you feel connected with yourself, makes you feel like you're able to like who you are, love who you are when you're doing or being or guiding with whatever you're doing and just experiment with these subtleties of what that is because this is a really magnificent authority and it's it's rare and there's not that many people that are going to be able to pave the path for you if you're a self projector there's not that many people that are going to fundamentally understand your trip so it's your responsibility to be a leader in your life and for you to make it your trip and that doesn't mean that you don't have support and guidance and beautiful relationships with people but there's not going to be that many people that really understand both the power of you and also the vulnerability and the challenges and the kind of resilience and strength that you need to withstand being a self projector in this world being so open. So this is a long video, but I wanted to get that out because it's been brewing for a long time and I'm sure that there's a lot more from where that came from, but I hope that's helpful for you right now. So if you're a self projector, I'm sending you so much love, so much love um, and so much support and, you know, just remember, remember who you are, you know, and let that come up, let it come up without holding it back. Um, if you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more YouTube videos about human design, um, and make sure to write in the comments what stood out to you. So if something really stood out, something you resonated with, maybe something you've also experienced, I'd love to hear that. And if there's any specific questions you have about the self-projector type, make sure to leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to them. 
So thanks so much for tuning in today for this long video. I hope that my experience and my stories of self-projected projector has offered some value to you. And yeah, lots of love.